Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Adrodles Blitz, and in today's video, I'll be playing in the Tier 10 American Tech Tree Light Tank, the Sheridan. A vehicle that is just absolutely fantastic. It features a massive chunk of alpha at 560 damage per shot. It also features crazy good premium pen at 341 millimeters. This is the highest for every medium and light tank in the game by a whopping 10. I mean, that's a a lot. So the Sheridan has great pen for what it is. It's got great alpha and even DPM wise 2500 is actually not that bad for what a light tank carries. It also has the best on movement dispersion for a 150 millimeter cannon in tier 10. What that means is when you're driving your tank rather than your aiming circle going like this when you're moving, it's actually going to stay like that. Meaning that when you stop your aiming circle is going to get a lot smaller a lot faster. Overall, the Sheridan is a fantastic tank, and it's one of the only vehicles that's really stood strong even with this very, very auto-loading setter meta. With all these auto-loaders, you normally want to have a lot of alpha and a lot of mobility, which is exactly what the Sheridan has. Because what happens is, let's say, for example, the enemy TVP, or enemy object 752 decide to poke me. Well, I shoot, th shoot them for 560, and then I back up, and if they're not able to get another shell into me by the time their intraclip is ready again, then that means that I'm not going to lose any health more than the 300 they hit me with, or 450, and I'll still win the trade. Because of that, it allows us to be just an incredibly strong tank for dealing with opponents and out trading. So already we've been able to start off this game pretty well. We spotted the enemy Sheridan and got a pretty nice shell in. So that's pretty solid. That's a free 500 damage right out the beginning of this battle. Now, I don't know if I want to put myself in the position to poke that Sheridan anymore. So I'm going to be very careful. We can see that the Sheridan actually shot at my teammate. We also got the 268 spotted in the back. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to poke and... And we're going to see if I can get a shell into the Sheridan, maybe. Looks like that's not going to be the case. All right. Let's back up. Oh, we got the Chieftain off to the side. Aiming, aiming, and fire. Unfortunate. That was actually a really, really unfortunate shell, because that actually should have penned. But that's fine. Again, we're in a light. We can just chill here. We're not going to be spotted by anything, so let's just wait a little bit longer. We've got our shell loaded at this point. We've got the E4 crossing. Bonk. Nope. Unfortunate as well. All right. Well... Right now, the game's not going great. The enemy E4 and Chieftain have both gotten away with uh, crossing, which is rather irritating. Oh, we got the 268 still back there as well. Hmm, I'm not really sure what to do. This is an example of where the Sheridan does feel a bit out of its comfort zone, because obviously this is a tank that does well when opponents make mistakes due to the fact that it features such a nice alpha. But in this battle, the enemy is just kind of getting bled, which is actually rather good. We do have the TVP on the side, though, and this is what I've been waiting for. First of all, I can actually HE the lower plate of that TVP, rolling a nice 600 damage shot. Now, our 752 appears that he's going to go for that TVP, but I got you, bro. That TVP is going to try and run, and the thing's fast, so having all that speed means that it's going to try and get out very, very quickly, but with this tank, we obviously do feature alpha, and we feature mobility. Now, we do see that the enemy 268 is off to the side, but the 268 also appears to be oblivious, and the object 752 shooting at my teammate. So, even though we played this game quite passive early on, as you can see, this is where the Sheridan's alpha and mobility are coming into play. The 752 is hopefully going to waste a bit of time on me, allowing my 752 to get not only one shell in, but me to get one shell in, waste more time on his tank, and why did my teammate shoot heat? Like, really, bro? You could have just, you know what? That's your problem now. Oh, I'm glad it's his problem, because uh, we got a 268 on our tail here. Um, I'm actually... I'm going to shoot the 268. I'm probably going to die in this situation, but the best way I can play this is to leave just like that. Now, our 752 literally just has to kill this guy. There you go. He does. Nice. The enemy 268 shoots, and this is where obviously having that alpha allows us to get another easy shot into that enemy 268. And there you go. I mean, this is the Sheridan. As you can see, this game, as I said, started off pretty lame. We weren't able to do much, but the enemy TVP, which is the auto loader I wanted to take advantage of, made the mistake of flanking, trying to get a clip out, which it did, but then I was able to get some nasty chunks in. And even though that 268 tried to YOLO us, didn't have the reload to kill us, I actually thought it was going to be able to, but looks like we were just able to squeeze around that corner before it did. 
and deal a pretty solid 3,800 damage. Even if we hadn't have gotten that last shell out, we still would have done over 3k, still would have won, and helped out our team quite a bit. So you can see just where this light tank feels amazing. It really does. Something I always get just outstanding by with the Sheridan is the fact that it's actually got pretty good shell velocity. You would think a 150 millimeter cannon would feature quite bad accuracy paired to shell velocity, but first of all, look at that on movement dispersion. I mean, again, this is a 150 millimeter. We're driving at 50 kilometers per hour, yet it's barely the same size as like an IS-4 on the move, which only goes like 40. I mean, it's just a little crazy when you think about it. Now, something great about the Sheridan is crossing shots because we're able to get a very easy, for example, 500 damage shot into that enemy M6 show. And unlike a normal tank or, you know, anything like that where I'd have to sit and wait. This tank, we just chill. So let's see, is that Yo over there? No, looks like the Yo is not. We do have that 57 Heavy off to the side, aiming, and a bonk. There you go. Look at that. Two shots, 1,050 damage dealt already. Once again, this is where being in the Sheridan allows us to take advantage of players like that T57 Heavy. You think driving an autoloader is uh, going to punish players? Let's see, is that 57 still there? It is. Uh, we've also got the 268 in the back. Huh, what do I want to do? Well, we can't kill that guy. We have the VK-72 camping here, which we were also able to spot. Once again, showcasing that fantastic view range on the Sheridan of 326 meters. I can't really shoot that guy. I'm kind of hoping that VK ends up poking. Because um, right now we're kind of stuck here. But, oh yeah, look at that. Once again, the accuracy on this tank just getting the job done. Our uh, Yag was able to absolutely smack that guy as well. We can now see that my grill is being rushed by the Leopard and 907. So what we're going to do is we're going to aim it on the Leopard. I'm not going to shoot an HE because it's a risky shot from the angle we're shooting at, but we are able to penetrate that Leopard and get a nice shot in. So let's reload again. Let's see if we can get another shell into that Leopard if he pokes. Come on, poke it. You know you want to. Also got the 200 LT off to the side. Oh, he's close. Come on, poke it again. I'm going to load a heat shell. Uh, we got the 907 off to the side. Bonk! There you go! Nice! Another 400 damage shot. And our E100 was able to bonk that 907. Okay. Well, I don't really like the position I'm stuck in, to be completely honest. I uh, really don't like this position at all. The problem is, uh, I can't back up because of that VK-72. The 907's got a dead driver. I'm kind of hoping... Yes! Just like that! Now, we are getting some massive low rolls here, which is rather unfortunate. I can't do anything about low rolls, but... We have been able to deal about 3,000 damage at this point. We've also been able to easily, easily roll the enemy. Um, I want to try and get out, though, so I'm going to try and do that right now. Hopefully, we can cross without being shot. Nice. Okay, we were able to. Let's chill here for now. And, oh boy. Oh, I really don't like this. This is awful. Never mind. This is just a disaster. Uh, let's just back up here. Um, oh, we got the 268 who's going to bonk me. We were able to get a shell into the 268, and the Yo's going to do the classic 40% maneuver, which is try and YOLO me, which there's nothing I can do about. Honestly, this game was a loss from the beginning. I mean, I've got my E100s literally lost, Captain Moist. Um, the Yag actually did okay. I don't know why our E100 was here. That was the honest major problem. Uh, I couldn't get out, and these guys weren't fighting their heavies, so their heavies were just able to camp. Unfortunate, but we still did pretty good. I really can't complain. We did over 3,000 damage. We held off the enemy mediums for as long as possible. Honestly, it might have been better if I had stayed there, but it definitely would not have changed this from a loss, so... Oh well. Unfortunate for us. So let's see what the final results here were for the Sheridan. What I can tell you for a fact is that we definitely would not have been able to deal nearly as much damage if we were in another tank. We did 3,500, which is pretty dang solid. We assisted 800, which means we got some spots out. I'm still rather confused on how we lost this game, but I guess the fact that both E100's platoons did absolutely nothing, and they were not the best players, were a pretty big reason why. We had a Type 71, apparently. Our M60 looks like he maybe played a little too aggressive on medium side without my support early game. So, oh well. Overall, I absolutely love the Sheridan, and even though we didn't get the result we wanted in that battle, it's still, it's just an amazing tank. It feels fantastic to bonk people for a massive chunk. The gun depression's great. The fact that you can't HE the tank anywhere because it's covered in space is fantastic. It's just got everything going for it. It's got pen, alpha, DPM. It's, it's just such a nice tank. Hopefully, you enjoyed today's video, and if you'd like to see more like it, let me know in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!